Clint McHale, everybody! Oh my gosh, this is the pinnacle of my comedy career. <laughs> wow, this is awesome. We got anybody out there celebrating anything? We got a dude back there talking on the cell phone. Hey, how's that drug deal going, bud? Not anymore. All right, let him know I want to at least announce. We got a birthday, He's, he's right? a magnet. We got a birthday. Yeah. Who's, whose birthday? Not yet. Oh, looks like he's turning like 84. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Great. You guys doing good tonight? Yeah. Oh man, I'm in a great mood. I just saved a ton of money on my child support by switching to comics. <laughs> yeah, so that's working out pretty good for me, man. You guys, I'll tell you a little bit about me. I'm a huge sports fan, and I don't know why, but I'm really digging on the NBA. This was like the coolest summer ever with all the free agency, and I think the biggest name out there was LeBron James after all that decision-making going back and forth. He finally came out and decided what team he was going for. Did you guys follow this? He decided to go with Team Jacob. <laughs> now, a lot of people were thinking that Team Edward was going to be the better camp. But if anybody can make Team Jacob work, it's going to be the king. But uh, speaking of uh, Team Jacob, do we actually have any fans of Twilight out there tonight? <laughs> Are you serious? Lady in the front row. Wow. Yeah, we're over 16 here. What is going on? Let me tell you guys, I got a lot of issues with that movie. <laughs> and first of all, it's not the werewolves I have issues with. And it's not the vampires I have issues with. You see, I'm probably the biggest dork you guys are going to meet. I actually have a level 80 Night Elf Warrior on World of Warcraft. Lovely. My issue with the movie Twilight is this. It's been my experience that it's the woman who vampirically sucks the life out of the man and not vice versa. Gosh. And what the hell is going on with the movie full of a bunch of vegan vampires and Mexican werewolves anyway? <laughs> and I'm sorry to tell you this, but if you live in the forest by yourself, and you don't eat people, and you sparkle, well that doesn't make you a vampire, that makes you a fairy. <laughs> and I get so sick and tired of all these chicks out there that are like, Oh my gosh, that Edward guy who's a vampire, he's so dreamy. Or, oh, that Jacob, he's a werewolf, he's such a hottie. <laughs> Do you guys realize what you're admitting to, chick who raised her hand? <laughs> that you're into necrophilia and bestiality? <laughs> you think those guys are into some kinky shit? Oh my gosh. But seriously, any girl out there that might be a fan of that Jacob guy, do you think he might be good looking? You might be the gal for me. But let me tell you what. Hunt, if you get into somebody who's really nice, who when he takes his shirt off has the potential to get extremely hairy, then me and you might have a chance. Because I'll tell you what, I went swimming a couple months back, took my shirt off, I look like I could belong in the orangutan exhibit at Polo Zoo. I did rock the hell out of that speedo though. Oh man, guys, I love, I love doing stand-up comedy. It's like a therapy session for me. I get to stand up on stage and vent about my problems. Let me tell you, I got a lot of problems. And sometimes I wish I had like a magic powder I could just like throw out all my problems and make them disappear, you know? Kind of like a wizard or a crack addict. <laughs> the guy back there on the cell phone knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hit me up later, bud. Probably the biggest problem that I'm finding is I find myself recently single, ladies, going through a bad divorce, and uh, my friends are trying to reintegrate me into the whole dating scene. So, true story, I get a call from some buddies the other day, and they're like, Clint, you should come hit up this dance club with us. And I'm like, I don't dance, I seductively jiggle. <laughs> But I'm willing to get out there and make a difference, so they drag me to this dance club, and the first thing I start to notice is there is a whole lot of gay-looking dudes there. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, bud. You've accidentally visited a gay bar at least once. Yeah, it happens to us all. So, no, it's gay night. You know, I did make an interesting observation, though. Apparently, the gays really like to eat skills. I guess those dudes really want to taste the rainbow. 
But I want to say I don't hate on the gays. Look, if a dude wants to date another dude, that's cool with me. That's just less competition. And look at me, I don't need the competition. But let me tell you what I have issues with. Lesbians. Lesbians bug me. And for all you girls out there thinking about going over to the dark side, let me tell you why. Look, if you want to date somebody with absolutely no sense of style, a really bad haircut with boobs, then why the hell not date me? I'm rocking at least a beak up here. It can't be that hard to scissor. I'll learn. There's all this controversy going on here in Utah about how gays can change. And you know, they're backing this up now with a new medical study. They're coming out with a new medication for lesbians, people. It's called Tridixigan. <laughs> yes, Tridixigan, take it in your lesbian, and it works awesome. However, dude, the side effects suck if you take it in your man. Uh, guys, I honestly think my problem started when I came home and my mom told me she was getting remarried and I'm like, Mom, you can't do this to me, you don't understand, that's going to make me a stepchild. And she's like, "Hun, your dad will still love you, I promise. And I'm like, no, you don't understand, that's going to make me a red-headed stepchild. I've heard rumors that these guys are beaten. <laughs> the rumors were true. <laughs> Oh man, gosh. I don't know, the other issue that I struggle with is probably my weight, and that's because I have messed up concepts when it comes to food. Like, for example, I believe that double stuffed Oreos should be called regular Oreos. And regular Oreos should be called diet Oreos. <laughs> and as I'm sitting there one night, tripping out about my weight, about 3.40 a.m., I come across this infomercial for this thing called the Shake Weight. Now, if any of you don't know what the shake weight is, it's this device about, no. yay big. This is proven, however, let me tell you, supposedly doing this over and over and over again is going to get you into really good shape. And I'm sitting there thinking, late night TV, how dumb do you think I am? Granted, I did buy this Snuggie that one time, but that was because it was cold and I couldn't find my sweater. But if you're telling me that doing this over and over and over again is going to get you in good shape, then every 14-year-old boy in America would look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I mean, how long have you been with the Shake Weight program? <laughs> Granted, the forearms are massive, but you're not filling out the rest of that shirt there, bud. <laughs> They got all sorts of weird things on late night TV. Like, I came across an honest commercial for a feminine hygiene product. I swear to you, it said this. Have a happy period. <laughs> Who in the hell has heard of a happy period? I mean, does your girlfriend come home and say, Honey, I'm on my period. And you're like, Woohoo! Period time! <laughs> no, you run and you hide for like a week straight. You avoid direct eye contact. Happy period. Have a happy menopause. Oh, man. You guys ready for some real comedians? Woo! Oh, man, this is awesome. I'll tell you what. You know, like I said, though, before we bring our first comedian to the stage, I am single, ladies. But that just means that I'm only two away from having a threesome. Which is kind of cool yet depressing. But the one thing I have learned being single is, you can't force anybody to love you. All you can really do is stalk them and hope for the best. <laughs> Guys, with that, let's bring our first comedian, your friendly neighborhood 